but he was on Fresh Air, uh, which I found very interesting that, that uh, NPR had this dude on, this very anti-establishment, um, you know, anti-intelligence agency person. But the interview was, was uh, you know, was kind of a standard NPR interview. Um, they opened up the interview by basically uh, asking a question about whether he's got allegiances to Russia, which is a, which is a bullshit question to begin with, right? Like this dude was trying to basically serve the American people. Discovered that one of the intelligence communities was spying on those people and because he revealed that information uh, and is stranded in Russia by the way we'll get to that in a minute uh, he's like working with this country he's working with a, uh, a, an enemy of the state oh like <laughs> what the fuck and he kind of makes fun of them at, at some point too is, is you know he's he does talk about how, like, I think we have a Hollywood sense of what what's going on with Russia and everything like that. Um, and I think we do, right? And and I think uh, questions like this, uh, especially questions like this that have been debunked, because it's been debunked. He's talked about this several times that he doesn't have an allegiance to Russia. Uh, it, it, circumstances have have put him there. Um, This just reinforces those smears and those lies. It reinforces that bias that uh, if you're somebody that reveals information, if you're a whistleblower of any kind, uh, then you must be working for some kind of a foreign state. You must be working with, uh, you know, anti-American interests when when really uh, Edward Snowden and um, any any of these whistleblowers, John Kiriakou, uh, uh Hale, Daniel Everett Hale, uh, these are all patriots. These are all standing up for the American people when the government and the intelligence community was not. That's what they're doing. So it just, it just starts to reinforce this bias and it starts to plant this weird little seed in people's minds that maybe he is a Russian spy of some kind. Oh, he's... Are we compromised? Oh my goodness, is this the Manchurian candidate? It's like shit like that. And he's not, and he tells the story, right? He tells the story that when he was, uh, in order to get to, um, he, was, he was trying to get to Ecuador, which is a country that offers asylums to uh, whistleblowers from America, and uh, it's one of the few countries that does. And he was trying to get to Ecuador. And in order to get to Ecuador, he can't fly over any country that America has um, uh, ties to, in a way, because uh, they will ground the plane. Like they grounded the uh, president of the Boli- uh, president of Bolivia's plane um, because they thought Snowden was going to be on that plane. Like, they were just like, he might be on it. Get that plate off the air. Do it. Get it out. <laughs> Land it now. And then they had to search a fucking diplomat's plane. Like, that's fucking nuts. Um, so they canceled his passport when he was in Russia because he had to go from Russia uh, to, like, Cuba to another country and then to Ecuador. Uh, so it was kind of this, like, hop situation make sure that they're not flying over any countries that uh, that America can ground the planes from. Um, and he, um, his passport gets canceled and they basically were like, hey, you want to cooperate with us? And, you know, Snowden being part of the intelligence community kind of knew what that meant. You know, kind of knew that what that meant was uh, you want to give us some information And uh, this is sort of an important note that I think uh, they weren't expecting to hear uh, is he had he had nothing on him of the leak. He had given the leaks to the to the to the journalist to to Glenn Glenn Greenwald of The Intercept um, and um, and then destroyed it. He got rid of whatever he had 
so he didn't have anything anymore um, and he was kind of which is a smart thing to do I think once you kind of give it to a journalist that you, that you trust and that, that you have vetted and uh, why would you keep that shit around it just makes you a target it just makes you an even bigger target he's already a target uh, so then they kind of kept him in the airport for 40 days like he was in the airport for 40 days if he would have made a deal with the Russian intelligence community, intelligence community, um, he points this out, he would have been out of there in five minutes, put in a limo, but been very well taken care of, and basically been paraded around as the savior of Russia, right? Um, second only to, uh, to maybe Putin or something. And... So there, there's no... I mean, he's not being paid by the state... Uh, the way that he, he he doesn't get like, and then he can he that's that's where he kind of makes fun of them where he was like yeah there's this misnomer I think uh, there's this fantasy of, of spy novels and spy movies and you know that Edward Snowden is living in a bunker surrounded by these guards and like that's how he's living his life and he's like I have my own apartment in Moscow I make my living by do, talking to people and doing these speeches and um, talking about the future of cybersecurity and stuff like that uh, and. You know, uh, he's free to roam around. He's free to go to the grocery store and stuff. Uh, but they kept asking these questions, right? That that were kind of these like uh, the minor smear question mixed with some of these like weird softball questions of like, do people recognize you? No. Do any? Does anybody ask you for selfies? Oh boy, Snowden selfies. That's an important question to ask you. just like yeah sometimes and then I do and then they're like thanks and we've moved the fuck on like what what it's not a question it's just ridiculous so he talked about uh, something else that's kind of interesting to me as well uh, in terms of uh, in terms of like what his what his responsibilities to the intelligence community was one of the things that he brings up is there is an oath of service that you take not an oath of secrecy the secrecy is uh, kind of like the like an NDA is sort of what it is. It's the way that he describes it, right? Like a non-disclosure agreement. It's sort of just you saying, I won't discuss this with the press or write a book about it or what have you. Um, and he has written a book about it and uh, the book is now being suppressed. They're trying to uh, basically try to block the, the money that he can make from this book um, to, to support himself. The United States government is basically getting in the way of that. Um, they, they're, they're, they, you know, they're putting a sanction on a person is basically what they're doing. They're putting an economic sanction on a person. That's how far this government, like, which is like, wait a minute, if this guy is not really reve revealing any, excuse me, revealing any information that's like terrible or, or makes the government look like they're doing something unconstitutional. Why would you need to suppress this guy? Why would you need to put a sanction on his book where he can't he can't uh, earn revenue from it? Seems kind of fucking weird. Um, but here's the thing. They don't suppress other people that have been former members of the CIA, the NSA, or the FBI that have also written books about, about their time in the intelligence community, right? But those are all those are all books that are approved by the intelligence community. They're all books that go, yeah, they're kind of making it look cool, you know. Can you give it like a Jack Ryan twist? Can you can you describe yourself as like a uh, like a schlubbier John Krasinski or like a like a schlubbier Jason Bourne? Can you do that? That'd be cool. Throw some throw some stuff about 
ninjutsu in there. That'll be that'll be exciting. That'll get people to read the book and make sure that they don't really figure out what's going on with the intelligence community, how we're violating the Constitution, various different ways. That's, uh, you know, I mean, there, right now there's there's a, a former member of the FBI that's writing smear pieces about a presidential campaign for Newsweek. Naveed something or the other. I can't, I can't remember his name, but he wrote a big smear piece about Tulsi Gabbard. This guy gets to go on completely unsuppressed. Doesn't have his revenue blocked. But that's because he's towing the line. He's doing what the intelligence community wants him to do. He's saying what the intelligence community wants them to say. He's not challenging them. He's not telling the truth about what these what what, what these uh, communities are doing. He's not shining a light on the truth. Anytime you shine the light on the truth, you are more than likely to get suppressed. And, and Edward Snowden is proof of that. So the, uh, another question that they ask is, oh, critics, he kept bringing, it up, bringing this up, right? Uh, Dave Davies or something of Fresh Air. He kept bringing up, uh, oh, critics... Um, Critics have brought up that, uh, you know, perhaps your leak has damaged the state of security in America. First of all, uh, uh, no. It has not. It's not done that. Um, second of all, he, he didn't just leak it, right? Like, he didn't just go on Facebook and fucking put that shit out there. <laughs> you know? Like, he's not... Like, he gave it to journalists. Who posted... Who, who then wrote an, an article after reviewing the material that he had presented to him. I remember reading the, uh, the, the Intercept piece. It was a very good piece. It was, v- it was very... Uh, this is, what, 2013... So this is six years ago. I was uh, 24. And still trying to wrap my head around what the fuck was going on. And, uh, and I mean, it's a good piece. Uh, and they highlight things very well. And even then, I was just like, what they're trying to do to the Snowden person is uh, not great. It seems kind of unfair. It seems like a violation of things. But he did the responsible thing. He, he gave that information to journalists that he could trust. Journalists that were going to do something uh, and, and report the facts of the information without, um, you know, being... Uh, without, without having to toe the line of the intelligence community, without letting the State Department control the narrative... Um, so that's what he did, but and and, the, and there's this claim that oh well he he he's ruined national security. Oh, America's security is in danger. Oh no, never been proven, never been proven to be true. Six years, never been proven to be true, not once. They're still collecting data. They're still spying on shit. You know. Look at the, in in the last six years, that technology has just gotten more advanced, right? Like GPS, GPS location services are, uh, you know, um, working a lot better. The cameras have gotten a lot better. And and those, I don't, I don't believe that the cameras on the fucking iPhones, 12 megapixel can fucking zoom in to catch a hummingbird's wings flapping properly and you know like you get to see all the details of the colors if there's a bee suckling on a flower you get all the details of what's going on with that bee the individual pollens that are stuck to the bee like that's not because you're trying to help photographers or 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 people become photographers no that's so you the the intelligence community can have a, a better view of what's going on 
they can hack into it and take a better view of what's going on. Get a clearer picture of shit that they don't need a clearer picture for. Because that's one of the that's another thing, right? Is it's this it's this It's a swath of information that they're getting. They're basically casting a wide fucking net without a warrant. And they're grabbing all of our data and they're treating us all like we're guilty. We're guilty of what? Guilty of fucking nothing, really. Guilty of whatever the intelligence community wants us to be guilty of. The thing that he brings up in this interview that I don't think he brought up in the... Um, I mean, he might have brought this up in the Joe Rogan podcast. I'm not, I'm not entirely sure. Like I said, there's so much in that Joe Rogan podcast. Um, he brings up this thing like like Google for the NSA. They're basically... Uh, when, when everything started, this data collection, since 1987... 1987! That's when they started collecting data. Through AT&T. 1987. Which, like, that... Even the fucking intelligence community is obsessed with the 80s and 90s, right? Like, there's all these people that have nostalgia for the 80s and 90s, and the intelligence community is right there with them. They're also like, Remember leather pants? You guys remember the Ninja Turtles? (laughs) Like, even the intelligence community is doing that. Forget about, forget about how Clinton was not for gay marriage and put DOMA in place. That was a Democrat that did that. Forget that. But you guys remember, guys remember that Ninja Turtles movie, though? Exciting. Huh? Don't, don't worry about Chechnya or Somalia or why we started all these seven wars because they all went off of the U.S. petrodollar. You, you guys... You guys remember Boy Meets World? Oh, man. That Corey Matthews. What a... What a scamper doodle that guy is, huh? Remember... Remember that show? Don't worry about how the Bush administration lied about children uh, being killed. Uh, in order to get us into a war that nobody was voting for. You guys remember those wacky adventures that Corey Matthews and Mr. Feeney would get into? Oh, Mr. Feeney. Oh, we love the Feeney. But the Google for the NSA is is a real thing. So they basically have this internal system uh, where you can type in somebody's name or phone number or email or whatever and you get a bunch of uh, all, all their data per, pretty much right so uh, call logs um, texts Facebook stuff Twitter all the stuff any data that's stored on your phone uh, or a computer or you know any of these social media sites um, and if they want to look for specific keywords and they want to look for um, you know uh Anything that they find suspi- like they're they're suspicious of, uh, they can pull up anything that you want, anything that you might have said, context or otherwise. Um, so basically, what this does is it makes it makes all of the American people guilty before they're uh, proven innocent. You said a thing that the uh, that the intelligence community doesn't like, uh, so now you are a uh, a suspect of sorts. That's horrifying. So, there, I mean, this is all this is all just just random targeting. Uh, it's unconstitutional, right? We have no privacy, um, and uh, and it's and and in, in a way, the, this is creating a, a cycle of fear that suppresses your speech, right? Like we're not, oh, we dare not say anything. We dare not say anything against the against the State Department. We dare not say anything about the true history of what the CIA or the FBI does or what the NSA is doing. We dare not say anything about the State Department starting coups in countries that they have no fucking business being in for to, to take a bunch of their natural resources. We dare not say anything about that because we might get fucked over. Hey, thanks for watching this video. Uh, this is part of a little series I do called Road Reflections, where I talk to you while I'm on tour uh, about the current socio-political environment, current news stories, 
uh, debates, that sort of stuff that I don't get to talk about on my podcast, Taboo Table Talk or Forkful of Noodles. It's a little bit looser. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this clip. If you guys enjoyed it, uh, you can find the full episodes on my Facebook page. Uh, you can go like Krish Mohan, uh, social vigilante and comedian. And uh, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, uh, share this out if you enjoyed it. Um, and another way to help uh, see more regular content is by becoming a patron over at patreon.com slash krishmohanhaha. Thanks again, guys, and we'll see you on the road. If you enjoyed the content of this video, there is a very good chance that you probably will enjoy my live stand-up comedy. I'm going to be touring all across the country, so if you are in Atlanta, Charlotte, North Carolina, Wilmington, North Carolina, Augusta, Georgia, Fort Wayne, Indiana, Champaign, Illinois, Bloomington, Illinois, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Madison, Wisconsin, Minneapolis, Minnesota, I will be coming to your city very soon. You can go get your tickets to come see my live stand-up comedy over at ramennoodlescomedy.com. That's R-A-M-A-N noodlescomedy.com. I hope to see you guys there. Thanks for checking out the video, and we'll see you on the road.